Alright, I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Alright, what's up? Uh, we just gonna talk. My name's uh, Rainer. We got my boy Kaziah. That's good. <laughs> we got my boy Ruben. Sauce for Ruben. 3 8 3 Yeah, 3 8 3 First thing we gonna talk about just anything uh, you wanna put on your mind, anything on your mind lately. In part two. I really like. I really like the way fashion is going. I think it's going in a really nice direction, especially uh, avant-garde fashion. And um, I think that there's a lot of new designers incoming, those young designers that are proving themselves to be very talented and progressive and understanding the material and understanding the basics and understanding how you even get to the advanced thing. So it's like I'm really appreciating a lot of things, but I think that one of the things that I don't appreciate right now is uh, – fast fashion and the fact that there's some designers who I think are selling out but not not to the extent that they're selling out like their whole brand more like they're selling out for this instance so when you talk about like fashion you're talking about like is like fashion as an art form right like so since it's an art form would you say it's like it's basically beauty is the eye of the beholder so like if something you find is like amazing like beautiful other people could find like ugly and that's respectable yeah. right yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy because like when I see your, like your fashion posts and all that stuff, I see like the when you talk when you talk about like the articulate stuff, like the threading and all that, like how it matches with this, the layering, that shit. Like I never saw that. That's crazy. Like there's such like a, I I just think you think differently in things because like you understand it more. That's I think that's like for all things though. The more you understand oh. something, the more you can appreciate it. Yeah, that's I think like, that's what life is about. Yeah, hell yeah. That's I think that like fashion is just art, and you know, yeah, I facts. feel like I like how it's like you know, it's up to different people's interpretation. What except Beautiful. Picasso, bro? Picasso, something's like she shit looks like a third year old drawing, bro. Like, that, have you seen <laughs> I, like the thing that sold for like fifteen million? The little like stick figures that sold for like hundreds who's of behind million. Who's behind you? Behind me. That's the way. Uh, right. Oh, that's my that's my brother. Oh, okay, for sure. All right, so, uh, cause you want to talk about anything? Yeah, I just wanted to think, or as you remember the question I asked on my story. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was oh, like yeah, the the intentions. Yeah, Bro, you know, so I was like, gonna ask about that. I'm sorry, but th that question I had to think about it for like ten minutes. I I don't know if you worded it wrong, but so you said if uh, say say what was the question? Does good action justify negative intent? Okay, but like the thing is like. I was thinking, like, who negatively intends to do something and they get a good reaction, like, good action from it? I never understood Okay, that. so, like, let's say, like, a, a millionaire that gives $5 million to charity for tax benefits. Mm. Oh, that, there we go. And, like, it, it's okay. negative intention, but it's a good action. Is um, that considered good? What, do, what does good mean? Yeah. yeah like, that's like, what I'm good saying. as in for the good of the people? Maybe, I don't yeah. Know. Basically, okay. So like, let's yeah, use that example. Is that, is that considered good for the charity thing? I feel like, is it is it good to help homeless people? Yeah, it is. But like, you know, like YouTubers are using it for clout. I feel like mm -hmm. it's like both ways. It's something can can be good and bad. It doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be absolute. You know, like I feel mm -hmm. like it's it, it's a loose term. So I feel like yeah, something can be good and it but, can be bad at the same time. It just. But we also have agree. laws though. I agree with that, but I agree with Raymond. But then I I disagree that it's good for society i do think it's we're good for not, society. i don't because we're 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 making an image that we can be shitty people but we can do small good actions and it, that redeems us for all the shitty things i see i see yeah that's damn i didn't even think about that that's crazy see all right so um what makes these people good people why do why do you think they do that why do you think that they give to charity do you think that they give to charity because they want to help people not yeah, I think it's just like to them it's a way to to seem good you know like when I was saying like YouTubers chasing clout they want to seem good for like the public image you know like public image is so good. important nowadays especially like social media like how like everything basically agree. evolves around how pe how you think people perceive you that's a huge thing with, like, but I think that, like that social media I think that they boost the people that they want to boost and then they kill the people that they want to kill yes sir so and like then, social so media there's an agenda we also have to speak about the agenda that's at hand agenda so like politically basically, not only politically but socially mm -hmm. because it, the, the agenda doesn't come from politics it, it roots from social dilemmas and social and also some laws but I, I, I do agree because there is some laws that are ridiculous all right, and, so like, um, since uh, you're mm -hmm. on this like social like agenda, like, can you give like an example? Because that sounds like mad interesting. I would have to say, I'll... okay. 
I would have to say that the social. I'm sorry. This is this is so funny. Uh, oh, hold on, you stumbled me. Let me let me gather my thoughts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. It's some interesting stuff. Like agendas. Whenever I hear agenda, like the only thing that comes to my mind really is like the political agendas of like if it's good it's for the people, it's bad for the people. It's but not, yeah, what is a social agenda? There's only one right. Like there's only an absolute position. Like. I think that it's, for example, let me give you an example, a controversial example, the transgender. I think that it's okay for people to be transgender. Yeah. I could give less of a damn. And I think that we should allow transgender people to do whatever they want. Yeah. But I think that to ignore that it's possible for them to be mentally ill is quite um, just, it's stupid to think yeah. that because of the fact that it's in the DSM-4 and in the DSM-5, except in the DSM-5, it's, it's changed to a different name. So I think that it's just we have to mentally test these people for whatever yeah. job they're they're going to, especially no, just if they're like going how to you some s- military jobs, political jobs. Exactly, we have to take psych tests, just like we need to psych test police officers. Oh, and we need I to, see. And, and, and and let's get into another subject. We need to reform police, and we yeah, need to we, they need to we need to be training them. We need to train them. De- hey, but hey, going so back to the transgender, so we just keep it there real quick. Um, like when you said like like uh, they can't have mental illnesses. Like it's who they are. I remember though, there was a thing a couple years back. It was a really popular clip on like the Joe Rogan. Uh, he pulled up stats of like people, the like, suicide rates of transgender people pre-op and post-op. They don't lower or raise. Like it's usually like it's still it's the same high 40%. because it's we're not targeting the, the the mental illnesses that a lot of people have, and they they neglect and push it onto like other issues. So like instead of confronting it, they they give it a name. Like they just say like it's because I don't. I'm uh, I'm not happy not because I have depression it's because I'm not the right gender you know like they push mm-hmm. it off that's just like a you know over exemplification but yeah that's crazy right. but I think social media also boosts and makes more transgender people want to be transgender and I think mm-hmm. that it makes it converts uh, people going through puberty to to become transgender because it's socially popular mm-hmm. and it's socially socially, it's socially like oh yeah I think that I think that people are comforted by so many others when they're transgender although there is other people who are like uh, transgender and don't accept them I think that those people who don't accept transgender people should should shut up because yeah, it's it's stupid. a mental it's illness so and if you don't if you don't accept not not all the time I mean not all the time sometimes just like if we were to discriminate people who are depressed or people who are schizophrenic why we don't do that we treat mm. them equally if not even better so yeah. this is why we need to stop making it a stigma and more make it like hey we understand but you need to understand that we're trying to help you. And yeah, when you, you say like cutting uh, off your penis at 15 years old or 18 yo, years old yeah. is not going to help you. When you say like the transgender thing being a popular thing, I feel like the only example I could like think of is like maybe like a gay guy. Like let's just say like a man who who is gay, right? Or he identifies as a gay man. He um he's just gay. Like he doesn't want he doesn't see himself as a woman, but like society pressures him and like pushes that uh, that thought that maybe you're just not the right gender. Maybe he's just gay. You know, that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. So, How like, do you I think society just, pushes it? I feel like it pushes it as like uh, uh Ruben was saying like it's you feel more comfortable when you talk to like people that like uh, are trying to like uplift you per se, but like uh let's see. It's it's basically the more you see of something, the more influenced you are, and the more people that support this thing, the more you likely are to transition to to that thing. In my opinion, that's the that's why I think that like I definitely think that you can control a lot of things in your life just based off of like uh like your mind, like how yeah, much you definitely. see and like how much you're influenced by in the day, how much you how much time you spend like doing things or what you spend uh what you pay attention to, like. Your mind is a powerful tool that you can use, and it's a powerful tool that can be used against you. You know, like, bro, we're, we're talking I want to do. Hold up, I need to get a scan for the phone. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Uh, I'll just talk to Kazai. Mm-hmm. Like, Kazai, when you said, like, the ma- mind's a powerful tool, um, that's mm-hmm. 100%. I think the mind is the most powerful thing that anyone has because through pure will and determination, you can do, like, 99% of the things that mm-hmm. are available to the human body. Good the human yeah. mind. I truly believe, bro, like, if if you say you could do something and you really have to have the discipline to wake up every day and stay consistent and do it, mm-hmm. if you can stay consistent and do it, if you can just ignore everything that your mind is telling you and be like, hey, like, okay, I need to do this because it's going to be better for me and I'm going to make my life better, then you could completely change your life. Exactly. You know, like, 
Um, speaking of this, like, mind over matter thing, I feel like the only thing that really, um, I, s like, the first thing that I think of with mind over matter is, of course, like, physical fitness, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I know all of us here, I'm away for Ruben, though. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Ruben, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Daddy? Alright, so, like, all of us are, like, we physically challenge ourselves in our life, as in to grow better as a person, to grow healthier as a person. We all challenge each other, and, like, we've, uh, pushed, pushed each other and pushed ourselves to limits. And I feel like that everyone should be should push them push themselves to the limits because mm -hmm. that's the Try best you you can be. Mm -hmm. And that mind over matter thing is like when I hear like people that can't do something, I like I scoff at the idea of that. Like when uh, I mean I'm just trying to think like Lizzo, right? Like I'm not mm -hmm. I'm sorry to just bring it up, but like Yo, Lizzo, come on, bro. Lizzo's not healthy. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm gonna say she like, isn't. Man, I mean, she's, she's not healthy. Like I'm but not saying she's, she's not savage. beautiful. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she is. I mean, I guess. I, she, she makes like a music. Yeah. Cookie Monster. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, man. Hey, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but like, when we talk about Lizzo, right, and we call her morbidly obese, that's not saying she's not beautiful. That's not saying she's ugly. That's not saying she's she's any she's less than me or I'm better than her. It's just that I, she's yeah. fucking morbidly obese. She has more than 28% body fat that could kill her in the next 20 years. Exactly. Right? And it's unhealthy. That's why it's I said, unhealthy. like, I'm when you first she's started. Beautiful because just like we said with Ruben, art is beauty and beauty is the eye Exactly. Of so many people can see you're beautiful. I, I, am, I hope she sees herself as beautiful, and I think she does. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. But it's not healthy. And that mind over matter mm -hmm. thing is she just doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to become the best her physically physically what do you, what do you think that because I, I feel like she would have done it already and i feel like she's grown complacent with her current physical status you know i think i think that's i both think that's think okay grown, and why do you okay. think she's grown complacent uh i just think that it's because of increased like like societal like standards like how we're like uh this like you know body positivity per se even though i feel like body positivity is something completely different i feel like she just has the mindset that she she doesn't have to change and that's that's like that's perfectly fine but like if doing something will increase your health her, your health and your overall like well-being i feel like it's just it's dumb not to do it to a certain degree of course like you don't have to hit oh. a fucking six pack to be perfectly healthy but if you're if you're just a couch potato doing nothing it wouldn't hurt to go on a walk or eat healthier you know? i don't know i think that like it it's a problem that is more like complicated than that because like yeah. obesity is a problem in America. So we have to ask ourselves like why are people fat? Like, you know, what's really going on in the country to where, you know, like the majority of the population is fat. Yeah, and it's, one third one third of those yeah, old. One third. and a majority of like it, youth. It's actually. more than like a mental thing at that point. But yeah. I still I like, yeah, it is a mental that, thing. There is like some some like status stuff and like a uh, societal stuff like yeah, definitely. Up, I mean, like, the, corporations, yeah. they basically the rule that, uh, this country now, cool. so, but you know, whatever products that they're trying to push, they're probably not going to be good for us, yeah. depending on the corporation. So, I mean, like, the amount of power they have can influence yeah. people a lot, especially their health. Because uh, when you say that, like, the first thing I think about is, like, fast food, bro. Like, how cheap is fast food? How easily accessible, especially in, like, poor neighborhoods is fast food? And how unhealthy mm -hmm. is it? Yeah, because my homie, my homie Phyllis works at in and out You know Phyllis, right? Shut the fuck up. Okay, okay. I know okay. Phyllis, dog. I know Phyllis. Phyllis? Yeah, I know. Phyllis? You know, hey, yeah, have you seen, have you, is, this he, is he uh, friends with uh, Candace? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> Hey, he don't want to admit that he got caught by that shit earlier. You not funny, bro. He got caught by that shit. You you got the humor of a third year old, bro. That shit was funny. Yeah, but you that's you hung up your phone, bro. You hung up your phone, bro. You have airplane, bro. Anyways, you know, when we we were just talking about uh societal standards, so why don't we uh keep going on that, Ruben? Like, what's your societal standards? What's your belief? Is it do you believe that there's a place to be healthy at? You need. There's a place where there's the best pristine condition where you can be, where you have the longest lasting life. And maybe people don't want to have a long lasting life, but I'm still going to recommend it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but what do you think the societal standard is in America? Yeah, what is a societal I, standard? Societal standard. In America? Yeah, I'm, I'm I, think sure. that, I think that there's a beauty standard. Yeah, there's a beauty standard. But there's always a beauty standard, though. 
In every 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 genre. Okay, but like I'm talking about the beauty standard in America. I, I feel like it is, I, I feel like skinny is still like the beauty standard of like for many many places, especially like East Asian, like Korean. Uh, yeah. And then most. Yeah, for sure. What, beauty, what about like Hawaiian cultures? Oh yeah, and let's talk about that beauty standard in uh um, uh let's say like because I know for like Asia, light skin is the beauty standard. Like mm-hmm. having lighter skin, well you you're more beautiful and. We could talk about that if that's like a racial thing, a preferential thing, but let's talk about right now. What is the beauty standard in America? I think from my perspective, it's a slim it's not a it's a slim thick woman. It's a woman that got that that's Dude, I don't know why this fucking matters. I really don't know. I know, I was just like, what is it right now? That's that's like the thing in my head. Cause like what is like the societal like I I really think that like it's it's like like what you said, it's it's being skinny. I think it's like being fit. Yeah, and the, like the thing is, I like, think it's always been like being wealthy too. Yeah, I do agree with you. It's, it is fucking slim thick though. But like, but what, the what, thing okay. is that it's slim thick. It's a little bit more skinny slim thick. Yeah, not like thick thick. Slim but listen, the thing. This is this is why Ruben. This is why I wanted to say that. So like okay. now, now that I, we we set the standard, is it wrong to push for that? That's why I wanted to ask. So is it wrong to push for that that beauty standard, or is that like is that race is that racist is that is that wrong? That's preferential. What, what's is that it wrong about wrong. it? Okay, it depends also how you put it. Am I being an asshole to you? I'm gonna be like, hey, you fat fuck, you need to go to fucking gym because I do do that to some people, but you I do, do no, that to the I people who I'm close to, are the people who I need to push the most, especially if the, everyone else is on the line because of them. So that's why I'm in the wrestling room when in high school I was like that because I needed to push people to the fucking limit, and so because when I push them to the limit mentally, they're gonna they're gonna show me what they can do physically to the limit. So that's what I want. I don't want them to fucking be scared of anyone, not even me. I I want them to fucking I just want them to want to fucking kill me. That's what I want. I want them to be able to be so angry and so fucking intelligent to the <laughs> point where they have a fucking dissected plan of. Trying to dismember me on the mat. Okay, that's but like, that's all I mean. so when you talk I mean, about that, like when you say like you're doing it because you want to push them, that's that's beautiful, right? That's perfect, and some people can't handle that. But like the thing is, like my question was, is it wrong to push these beauty standards, or like should we no. should be, should we be what? more open to like thicker people, like fatter people? In my opinion, I don't. In my opinion, I'm not I feel like sure. I feel like there's nothing wrong with being a little like thick, right? Like a n- little like fatter. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think there's something wrong with blocking your mind out that being a little bit healthier would not be beneficial to your health. Or like mm-hmm. it wouldn't make you I feel like healthy is beauty in my opinion. In my yeah. opinion. Mm-hmm. It's different for you. So like if I see like uh, a morbidly obese woman morbidly obese woman just like modeling, like if it the only thing that, that would be responsible for is like fitness modeling, like you put buy these fitness clothes so you can lose weight. But anything else like bikinis and stuff like that, I feel like that's unnecessary because they're. Well, just... I think that's because of consumerism, though. Like that, the fact that they have to put like plus size models out there because they want to appeal to the masses. They want to make sure that people sure. are like actually buying, you know, their clothes and they want to buy their clothes. But one thing I wanted to say before though was uh, like when I first met Ruben, bro, he like really like. He was like super. What would you tell me? Like, I remember he told me that like, I was I was like, there's a lot of things in my life that like I'm doing wrong. And I was like, I know I'm like I'm doing it wrong. I just need to do them. And he's like, okay, then why don't you do it? And like, I don't. It was it was like a super aggressive approach. But like, I was like at first taken aback by it. And I know like a lot of people like would have been taken aback by yeah. it and I'm like dang you know like this is probably like a lot why a lot of people can't take that like that's a bunch of reality aggressive bro. you know assertive like realism and I'm like you're right like I do need to like start doing this because like it's gonna be better for me and then I was like why am I not doing it and so yeah. I started doing yeah, it and like when, when you said that and Ruben was saying like he pushes the people that he needs to push because mm-hmm. he, he likes like a, that's close to him that's like tough love that's mm-hmm. like, that's great I feel like like he's just being real with you and that I, I need someone to be real with me and that was you Kaziah you you told me mm. what you were doing and how like it helped you so I got off my ass and basically it's like it's even though if they're like a dickhead about it or something like that you don't have to be the dickhead right but as long mm. as you're an open minded person you're not fucking some self minded like you hate you close anything that you don't agree with that's so <laughs> stupid if you're an open minded person you will become and you listen to other people's advice even you don't have to listen to people's advice but if you seriously think about what they said and how you could apply it to your life and if it will make you a better person you'll become the best version of you possible 
And mm. I feel like so many people are closed minded, especially with like stuff in politics. So I wanted to ask you, like, Ruben, like, I know you're a big political guy, in my opinion. So it's like, why do you think that so many people are so closed minded? Is it like something to do with society, like social media? Um, uh, that's a very difficult question. Yeah, I think that people have been closed-minded since forever. Mm-hmm. I think that if we think look back in history, like look at the Mexicans, machismo. You know, mm-hmm. they treat their women like shit. They don't. They, they degrade their women, and that's in Southern America. That's in Brazil. That's in all these other Southern American countries. Would you say uh, Middle countries. Eastern too? Almost. Middle East. Oh, yes, of course. And um, and it's like I don't hate their culture. I just. We have to take this into account. And I forgot what the question was. I what just was said, um, so uh, what is like a factor or like in your idea uh, of like the increase in like polarization, like politics and like closed mindedness in people? Because like, culture, you know, when you look culture. at st- statistics, uh, yeah. we've been more polarized than ever in like our beliefs. So what is I it? Think I also I think, think the president. Thing. President? Presidential? Like uh, executive? To I, a certain extent. Yeah. I think that. I think that I think that it's unfair. I think that it goes both ways. I think yeah. that Obama caused caused a strife, and I think that Donald Trump caused a fucking hurricane. I agree. I think that I think that Trump made a fucking hurricane because the thing is that after Trump was elected, everyone viewed him as bad. Everyone was blowing him up, but because they were making aware of everything that he was doing, and he was saying shit in the wrong way. Also, I think yeah. he's a horrible speaker, but he's funny. Anyways. Obama was a very good speaker. He knew how to speak. He was a great public speaker, but he did horrible things just like Donald Trump. Yep. But the media never made him look like a devil because of the yeah. fact that he's a Democrat. So that's why these Republicans got so angry because they saw the bias in the media, in the social media. And so this is why all these racist people actually have shown their racism is because social media is racist in and of itself. So it's just like you, it's a lot of hypocritical racism that's going on it's like okay white people are racist sure but so are black people so are chinese people and, and bro, so are hispanics like the notion of that uh you can't be racist to white people is the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my Man. entire life I, I uh, that, that is that crazy is, that is racist in its own, it in its own context i think that if someone told me that i'd be like you're lucky that we're not in the 50s because i would call you a nazi and i'd probably kill you in the yeah ex- exactly like, that, so, like some people are just 100 so percent racist to white people and when you were talking and, about i best believe i could kill people because <laughs> i don't know how to fucking dismember people i just to let people fucking know hey I, and hey. so Hey, I honestly think that's an important thing to know. I mean, honestly, it, it just, I don't know. You have to think about what kind of environment we live in. We yeah. have to adapt to our environment. If you want the best, you know, possible rate of survival, then you're going to have to, you know, adapt to your environment. You have to go above and beyond. Also, that doesn't mean I'm going to walk up to someone and be like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you for dis- for not believing what I believe in. Oh, of course. I'm going to just, I'm going to defend myself. I don't give a fuck about fighting people. If you don't think the way I think, I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. And it doesn't bother me, man. We're just having a conversation. I feel like, Anyways. you know, arguments are necessary yeah. for, like, for to create, like, you know, the like, composition is necessary for, like, uh, well, you know, at least in, like, markets and stuff. Like, the ideas is that competition creates um, better versions of people because it stri- makes them strive to be better. So I feel like when you're arguing with mm-hmm. people, you have to understand Not just why, market. Why, yeah, why you understand why you believe something so you can push it out and convince other people. That's just like with all beliefs. But when you said something about um, uh, media and Obama and stuff like that, right? And how Obama was Obama. a good speaker. <laughs> I want to say it's not just markets, though. Like, uh... Yeah. It, when you, what were you talking about when you said it? It was not just my kids. Obama. Obama. Hey, no, but listen. Uh, so uh, let me complete my thought real quick. Um, so right. when you said like something about the media, uh, and Obama and like how, fuck. Oh, can you say it again so I don't butcher? They made. They didn't demonize Obama, but they demonized Donald go. Trump. Yeah, 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 they committed the same amount of actions. Exactly. So um, like, what were you saying like the that, demonizing? I think that Obama did deport a little bit more than Trump, though. The demonizing of Only Obama. I feel more. like that's such a big thing though, because like when you see a lot of like the propagandists, like, um, like media spreading like like Instagram, like TikTok, that stupid stuff. Like people don't really know what they're talking about. A big a uh, big argument that I've seen at least is like the the whistleblower argument where Ob- or like Obama said he was gonna stop like cutting down on whistleblowers, but instead like he uh he prosecuted some shit more than any other president. Like people don't mm-hmm. like. I feel like a lot of things are hidden from the public, and that's a huge thing that don't people don't understand. And like when we talk about like Snowden, I mean, yeah, like Snowden was a huge thing. Like he he exposed the uh, the overly like uh, what's it called the law breaking 
fucking um uh, what's it Didn't called? Didn't he release the what's it called? The fucking MK Ultra shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With the overly bearing uh surveillance system that uh the US implemented. And like he was seen as a a, a devil for it. He was seen as like, oh, this guy's communist. This guy's marks like stupid stuff because people didn't understand when people are like, are ignorant Bro, about things. People don't even understand that communist countries don't even see what's going on in America because they're blind. I was gonna ask you. I was gonna tell you like, is TikTok really a stupid thing? Because you said it was like stupid things like TikTok and stuff like that. But like, mm-hmm. you know, like another company has like this much control not over just like like money in america but like data control over like the people not data the people like influence what do you mean yeah. what do you mean by, oh i see influence. i see influence influence. Yeah, influence a huge thing in social media. and uh they could they could filter and like these social media companies do filter like what they show people and like they show them like algorithms hey, i know me and ruben were talking about algorithms the, the thing is that the algorithm shows you what you're already looking at the algorithm exactly, exactly. Bad. the thing that's bad is that the, the people who are making things are slowly trying to leak in communist agendas really? little by little can That's you, what like, I was gonna say. Like they have the capability. It, yes, but the thing is, it's little by little. Yeah, it's I small understand. Little I understand. Things. It's small little. Oh yeah, look at this. Normalize this. Oh oh, it's, it doesn't seem that bad. Oh. And then a year later, oh, okay, normalize this. It's a little bit more than what it was. Okay, before. so oh, Ruben, okay, Ruben, Ruben you're talking about it's slippery like a slope. Talk, slippery, slippery slope. slope. Exactly. You're talking about like a slippery slope. So like, yeah. like, can you give like a, like an example of like how like a communist agenda? Because what is a communist agenda? First of all, like. What is that? To assign, you? assign and distribute equally. So, I have no freedom of choice in what I want to do. I go, they assign me a job. I get paid what they want to pay me, what the government wants to pay me, and they give me clothing, they give me housing, they give me water, they give me toiletry, and that's it. And okay, I get so... a small amount of fraction of the money. I get taxed like ninety nine percent, ninety percent. Can you give like Would an you... example of like the communist agenda, like how we could be like? Like how you said, you know, turn the slippery slope. Like, what would be an example? Because, like, I'm trying to, like, like picture it in my head. So, uh, People are saying to read uh, Karl Marx and read... Uh, really? And, and, take, and take it seriously and take Karl Marx seriously. There was a, a literal lecture of 50 people in... Uh, I forgot what school it was, but it was, like, a really prestigious school of Karl Marx. It was a whole lecture on well, what Karl, well, why Karl, he's correct. The, Karl, the Communist Manifesto, it is a... A piece of literature that I feel like not study per se, and like, but like you have to look at it to like to see their mindsets and like see their ideologies. I, I think it's I important to see stuff that like Karl that. Marx is a child. Sorry to cut you off, but I really think that he's just he's complaining about being alive because he didn't ask to be alive, and he's just like, give me money because I don't want to work, and I didn't ask for this. And so I think he's a little bitch boy. And sorry for my language, but I really do think that. It's just like, okay, don't you worry. don't want to work and you want people to pay for your your expenses because you want to live a decent life. Well, your life isn't going to be decent, first of all. Everyone's going to be equally poor because there has to be uh, unfair distribution. There has to be a hierarchy to, for, for a functioning society to exist. There has to be, at least right now, this is the best thing that we can do because okay. there's greedy people and we know there's greedy people. And oh. we need to weed out these greedy people. Once we weed out the greedy people, once we weed out the greedy corporations, once we get our taxes right and correct, then we can distribute money correctly and, and make this a utopian society. But, when but you until say, then, like, we need a hierarchy. That's you how they do that. it, too. Like, uh, that's going back to the point we were talking about later. Like, he was talking about slippery slope. Like, they do it through subliminal messaging. Like, when they use, like, companies like TikTok and social media to, like, like kind of, like, influence the public. Okay, so but like when you're saying, um, like yeah, how he's a big baby. Yeah, uh, okay, that that that's fair and stuff like that. I'm not saying I'm not communist or anything. I'm like I haven't even read the Communist Manifesto. But like, isn't it important to look at these like lyrical like and big like when I say big like it's very influential like um, pieces of literature and education and like understanding yes, what the world is and we like analyze it, it critically. It's isn't that important? So when you're saying like this like lecture of like fifty people in a prestigious school, what like what's wrong with them analyzing seriously they're like, not analyzing they're not analyzing they're agreeing with it. Oh and they're they're saying how good it is. Damn. Okay. Uh, that's mm, that's kind of pushing it. When you're agreeing with something that is but like um I feel 110 like hundred and ten million deaths yeah. in total. <laughs> I think plus, yeah. and then let's not account for the three million. Uh, I I don't know how to pronounce her name. Ugiers, 
they're going to be executed in China. So upon, I, my condolences to all the dead people that will be occurring. So. Uh, you know, like, communism, and this is a genocide we can't stop. So. What, what, what is the best? It's, is it run by the people? What's the best version of a fucking government? I feel like I think there's so much. I think it's like I don't know. What are you gonna say? I I, I want to say democracy, but like you know the way that our I you know what I think the thing is like a the thing about the United States is that like it is a melting pot, but at the same time in a melting pot you have so many like diverse cultures that means you have diverse ideals and ideas and opinions and everyone it's hard for us to like mesh together and be united especially if we cover so many like so much ground and there's so many people in small states and then we separate each other it it's hard you know what i'm saying well i think like uh yeah you are right about that and how like when you have so many different ideas and so many different perspectives it's hard to like cut like what what is right and what is wrong specifically cuz i feel like all ideas to a certain degree are are fundamentally correct like you can't just say mm -hmm. a blank something is wrong right away but when i'm saying like what is You're the best there's, always, there's no such thing as an absolute yeah um well, like what i want to say is like when it's run by the people right and it's run by officials and those mm -hmm. officials have power and power uh, i forgot what his name was but uh, i love this quote where power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely right and so I feel like when you put people in a position of power, they're bound to get corrupt because the feeling of of power is just ever since like a human history, it's amazing. It's 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 I, it's so. That's why like, we need. I think it's because we animals, though. Yeah, we are I animals because like we need that. Like, yeah, we have but the thing is that we have consciousness and we can understand our animal instincts to a, such an extent that that's why we're existential and that's why we have philosophers that are be are able to be existential and that's why we need a republic. People who understand to a, a degree that people cannot attain unless devoting your life to this thing, which is why we need a republic, which is why we have, uh, what's it called, the uh, electoral college, which is why we have that. This is why we have those things. You know, uh, but sorry, I do I, think you... that we need to really have some type of reform. Yeah, ex Law, especially, especially. Government. I think and, like as long as there's an incentive to want to do better we'll con like continue to progress as a society as as long as we all have like an incentive to like innovate mm -hmm. and create new things then technologically we'll be better as a society long term okay so we could solve more issues that way and we can you know be ready for whatever you know dilemmas or problems we have to encounter in life but like when you say that like we we become better technological and stuff like there's always so there's always those uh questions like if it's morally correct right like stuff like ai and stuff like that and i feel like we just have to come together as far as what though morally uh like when you said um can you say it again uh what you said about as long as we have the incentive to become better we will get better stuff such as like technology That's yeah so like basically i think as a society we need to have like the drive to want to go do better in communism there is no drive everyone's equal yeah, exactly. you know competitive you, you don't you don't want to be a doctor because you get paid just as much sitting at home yeah, why would i want to be a doctor competition like uh so creates growth and the ability yeah. for growth yeah that's yeah i agree with that especially. so it's like why why would i want to sit there at home and you know like Oh my bad. Why would I want to go work when I could just sit there at home and just chill and especially, just like not worry about like anything? What if you hate your job? Like and, and it requires yeah. a lot of thinking. Like you're not gonna be the best at it. But like okay, mm -hmm. so now that we established that we all hate communism, <laughs> uh, do you believe that there is possibility for utopia? I I don't know. I feel like the utopia. I feel, like we, I feel like as humans we are flawed. It, it so depends on like, like which idea of a utopia is. I think that's completely, you know, subjective. Yeah. Your idea of a utopia is not the same idea as I have, like yeah. my utopia. Exactly. That's why we can never have it. So I feel like when we put people in positions of power, uh, there's bound to be corruption. Like one million percent, there's bound to be corruption in every form of government and every form of people with power. Uh, but the thing is, like, I want to ask like, Ruben specifically, oh, and you too, Kazai, but. Uh, how when you're talking about reforms and stuff like that, you eating ruffles? 
<laughs> you hear me chewing? Yeah. Me chewing? yeah. It's all good, though. But, like, when you were talking about reforms, how would you specifically reform, like, a corruption in government? Let's just say specifically legislation, not not executive. But, like, you know, when you talked about the Electoral College and how it's good, but like, uh, this republic. Corruption. Uh, people Money. Saying, people, like, bring up, Lobbyist. like, uh, what's it called? Arguments that the electoral college is racist because it was lobbying, founded. eliminate lobbying. Yeah, lobbying and like electoral college, like not having really, um, like, how would I say this? Uh, it doesn't really have the right representation. Um, I think that's what people were saying. Like, how would you, uh, I'd like reform these things? Like, what is like an idea to reform these things? Reform what? Uh, like, specific. like the pro- like corruption and problems. Stop lobbying. What, what would lobbying like? Uh, how, what I, would, uh, stopping lobbying I think that you, you there you need to focus on individuals. I think that there are a lot of individuals that are leading our country right now that should not be leading our country. What are their motives? What is their intent? Like what I was talking about earlier. What what is their intent? What do they want to do compared to what do they want to like act like they're doing? I get you. I get you. Because some people are just half assing their shit, right? Bro, some people don't. Some people don't give a fuck about any of us. Yeah, they like, just want to make sure them in a small circle is okay yes, and sir. they can reap the benefits of their life just demolishing like, other lives, not caring about anybody. Like, constituents. Because they have that power. And like, that's what I was talking about earlier. We're animals. We in, in nature, like, like chimps, they 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 crave the feeling of power, dominance. That's where there's a hierarchy. Mm. We we feel something when we're powerful. It's in nature. I feel like, especially when you're talking about stuff like that, where people like just care about their own agenda, I feel like that is true. Like, especially like constituents, all they care about is getting reelected, in my opinion. Like, and uh, I don't know how to say this, but like, can you really reform something that has been like set in stone for so many years and like has just eventually been just turning the like turning the clock and just continually becoming more and more like we've like, literally been doing it for years we're yeah. using amendments are it takes time though Especially i think you could do it you, it takes time slavery was eliminated mm. i mean like the the literal definition of like uh well like a liberal it was way different than what it okay. was now yeah but like it, it's when been you said slowly stuff, reforming like, when you said like slavery was eliminated like uh what about like stuff um What's it called? I forgot what it's called. Okay, let's just, let's just skip the specific thing back. You know, right when the Fourteenth Amendment happened, and then they still had slaves, but like they paid them like close to nothing. Let's skip that idea though. What about like um how you were saying earlier when I was talking to you about like um the black the black communities and how they were inherently like they're they how would I say this um we they are disadvantaged. I would say they are. Because mm. they're put in poor communities, like isn't that how is that isn't that a, an effect of slavery? So therefore, we didn't really. Uh, like, you can't just say that about black people, though. I mean, there's I don't a lot think of it's black a sl- people, and there's also a lot of uh, poor Mexicans. There's also a lot of poor white people. Yeah, you know but not that bl- the most people, and e- you know that white people are the most people on EDD on a population percentage basis. So if we take a hundred thousand white people, hundred thousand black people, there's more people on EDD that are white people than there is black people. What is EDD, first of all? Uh, unemployment. Mm. Really? Yeah. But isn't there more white people in America, first of all? Uh, I'm talking about percentage population. Oh, percentage, percentage population. So it's like, so it's like if we, I j- just like I said, 100,000 100, black people, 100,000 white people, mm. there would be more people on EDD that are white than black people. Okay, I get you. And like, I look, I'm, I'm not an expert in anything. I don't know any statistics. You can statistics. go look it up. You can go look it up. Yeah, I believe you. And there's I believe also you. like, there's like, also statistics on like, uh, uh, white. I mean, black mothers. Seventy seventy percent of black mothers are single mothers, and it's and I think that's because of culture and not because of government. I think it's because of the culture. Ah, uh, okay. Let's talk about this then. Like cultural shit, like is like okay let's talk about specifically some big thing is like rape culture and sexual harassment is mm-hmm. is there a rape culture and like let's defi- let's let's define you can go first let, let's define, let's define. <laughs> I, I think about that i don't know you know first of all um, let's, let's define that depends what we define rape culture exactly as that's as what i'm saying let's, culture let's, culture let's is something it. that's accepted something that everyone okay does. let's say let's say it's socially acceptable to rape 
no, women. Not. That's rape culture. No, it's not. Yeah. No, that's, that's that's not rape culture. Like, well, okay, what is rape culture than you? Okay, yeah. Well, the first thing I want to think is like, first of all, no one thinks rape is socially acceptable, right? I don't think anyone in the okay, but what is rape culture? What is rape culture? Okay, for yeah, and a rapist thinks it's okay. Oh yeah, okay, you can't say that, but I think in my idea, like what rape culture is, and like I'm not saying I completely like believe it or disagree with something. What I think it is though is um, it's like. You know how like catcalling, like it's a normal thing for guys. It's like normalized. Like, hey, yo, uh-huh. you're, like you looking good, ma, right? Like that's uh-huh. disrespectful and stuff. But like what they're saying, from my uh, like understanding, is that like that like allowing stuff like that, the slippery slope happens where like you being able to like disrespect women to that like extent would lead to you having like this dominance ideology over women, and therefore like that will lead to like you harassing women and that would lead to like you raping a woman i think that's kind of like that's stupid i think that's i really think that's rape culture though I think that, let me tell you okay so this is this is why women feel that way is because women are a lot more agreeable they're a lot more uh they don't want conflict so when a man calls them a woman doesn't necessarily respond in the correct way most of the time they just let it slide they just let it go mm-hmm. most of the time until that person that's cat calling thinks it's okay to even approach them mm-hmm. which is when the sexual harassment is occurring i'm not saying that women want sexual harassment i'm saying that women need to stand up for themselves more because they're too agreeable and that's why and that's why i say that we need to have smoother gun laws because we need women with weapons carry there's sick fucking yeah. there's sick fucks in the world and I think, what what am I gonna do? Am I gonna tell a sick rapist that to not rape people? He doesn't give <laughs> a well, fuck what yeah. I get, what I say. He's gonna be like, you know, fuck, I'm gonna go rape your mom. That's what he's he, he thinks it's you. okay. Yeah, some people you are just fucked in the head, man. Some people are gonna carry a fucking gun. Look, look, okay. okay. I understand your ideology and like that gun culture. I don't wanna speak on gold country, gold, gun culture like right now but I do think that women since we men do have a physical advantage over them I feel like all women sadly how it is need to carry like a self defense weapon but the thing is like what I think what they're saying is like this shouldn't it shouldn't even be a thing like this rape culture allows for this like we should live in a society where like women shouldn't even have to fear for their lives and I think that is true women should never have but like is that gonna happen is that gonna yeah happen? yeah you don't think I think that oh, that's we... a utopia you're talking about yeah, yeah exactly that's why yeah. that's why I asked our utopia is possible to Gaziah earlier no yeah. definitely hundreds not. of years from now hundreds of years from now once we figure out that all this race bullshit is just bullshit mm-hmm. and then none of this who gives a fuck if you're black who gives a fuck if I'm Mexican we're just dividing ourselves we're psychologically exactly. dividing ourselves. We're psychologically making ourselves racist mm-hmm. we, without even knowing, oh, you're black, oh, you're a different tribe than me. That's what it is. This is what our ancestors did. That's why they didn't agree. That's why they killed each other because, oh, uh, you're, you're Catholic? Oh, well, I'm a Protestant Christian. Okay, well, we should kill each other because we believe differently. It's the same thing with skin color. It's the same thing that's racism going on today. We, who gives a fuck if you're black? We need to help each other if you're poor. We need to stop defining each other by our skin color. Like, yeah. it matters. Yeah. You know? It, that's 100% like human lives like race and all that they're all humans and like to to like think of someone as less than you on biased preferences like based on the color of their skin or like how how like where they were came from that's just straight up stupid I think we can all agree on that but my question was that uh, is it possible to get rid of like this so called rape culture right where like to the fact that um, women like I don't know how to say this. But I don't think it's rape culture. I think it's mentally ill. Fucks. Okay, yeah, exactly. I think that's right. a few but when you were talking about like the cat calling, a couple example. of guys that just don't understand. I think that it's just I, guys that don't understand boundaries. I don't think that rape culture is what you're saying. I think rape culture is like it, that it's socially acceptable to like rape. Word like up. like, uh, like people, like it's, it's allowed. Like rape is Iran. allowed. Of Iran. course, of course think it's allowed. Iran. Iran has rape culture. Mm. Okay. So let me, that, let me let me rephrase the term then. Um, how would I say? It? Let's just say like, it, uh, do you think that like, by pushing like just like keeping this like influence on social media and stuff like how like keep posting like the statistics like is this gonna help? Like my argument right now is posting all these like, of course like uh, having an open mind to it and posting the statistics and making people understand what's happening is that gonna I stop think- like people from just like catcalling stuff like that? Is that kind of now you're, but but then but then you're assuming that the people that are gonna read your or, or that are looking at your Instagram posts actually care yeah. about performing metacognition and actually care about being better people. Now you're assuming that these people are somewhat like you, 
which do you think that someone like you would catcall someone? You think that someone would do that? At the same time, though, I got to say that like putting information out there is like a good way to like at least get people to get knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah. So just to have the information like available to you just incidentally is like a huge advantage. Hey, but Ruben, uh, so like. I'm not sure how to say this properly, but let me, uh, let's see here. So I'm not saying that like, they all, we all think the same. There's a lot, there's some sick fucks in the world, but like, does this activism help and w- will it help? Like, do you think it's just like, they're just wasting their time? Like the feminists are just wasting their time? Yeah, Cause I kind of see like, I think is it like, I think of it as people have common sense and some people, like have less common sense the others than others, right? And some people are just sick fucks. So like posting all this stuff, uh, I think the only thing that it'll, it'll it'll help is like maybe some like ta- toxic masculinity type shit, right? That we haven't even got into. But like, people are sick, and just some people just need to like not exist anymore, and some people just need to I die. I think I think that those guys mm. that call are are toxic masculinity, yeah. but the reason why they're toxic is because they're pussies. Mm. Okay, but let me ask you this. You said some people shouldn't exist anymore. What about people that are born with the propensity to violence or rape? The people that think it's okay, like they need a. They need I, a I'm not. I'm not way. justifying it in any kind of way, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, what about them? If they yeah. they shouldn't exist, should we kill them? No, I think. Should we I just think, kill them? Do I they not belong to live because they were born with those it, genetic trademarks? I, I kind of said it kind of aggressively, but uh, basically. And the whole idea of reform, I think those people with those issues, they need to be reformed. And we have such a shit reform policy in America. And I don't know about any other worlds, but, like, look at our incarceration, like, our justice system, like, how, how corrupt it is and, like, how lacking in reform we are. I feel like we need better reform in a lot of our systems. And, like, basically, when people have, like, these mental illnesses and something, like, they can't control because it c- came from birth or baby, like, that's a whole different, like, discussion. Like, is it inherent or is it inherited? But like if mm-hmm. people have those tendencies, those violent tendencies, they need to be, they need to, people need to understand it and tell them that it's wrong and they need to undergo through reform, through correct systems that will actually like help them instead of just <coughs> institutionalize them, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like that's a big issue. So not that some people need to die, but like some people that committed the acts, like can you really help like someone who's mentally ill, like like someone who's a serial, ser- uh, serial killer? Can you really like Richard Ramirez? <laughs> like the dude that went into the uh, the courthouse and then he was like with killer on his shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the dude that went to the courthouse with um killer on his shirt and he like pointed at the um the audience. Sorry, you can still be exciting, but <laughs> and and he was like and he like started pointing at the audience and he was like, oh, you know, like I, I killed your kids and stuff like that. What the I. Wait, who, who is this? What, I've never heard of this. What if he's just a savage? No, but like, the, no. So like, the question I was saying, like, the idea I was uh, creating was that, um, like, we need reform, but some people, like serial killers, they they should they they lost their right to live, in my opinion. Like, mm. you can't reform a serial killer. You can't reform a serial rapist. You can't reform them. So you just have to kill them at that point. Supporting so, the, well, the death penalty. Death why 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 should we do tests on them? And see what's wrong with their brain to figure out how how we can prevent this. Oh, you could use some as like yeah, sure for study if you can learn anything from them. Yeah, but like some so, people are just sick in this world, man. I don't know. I mean, so I th- should there be opinion. no room for forgiveness in our legal structure or what? I feel like there should be room for forgiveness to a certain degree. Like I said, like instead of institutionalizing people, we should help them reform. We should help. What them if someone was a serial ass eater? What if someone was a yeah, serial you're a ass, ass eater. eater? You're gonna eat my ass tomorrow morning. I know you will. I'll... No, like, like, what if someone's like just going into people's random people's houses and just eating their ass? What the fuck is wrong with you? How long would you kill them? Would you kill them? <laughs> well, is that enough to kill someone? See, yeah. some people enjoy it, you know. I'm pretty sure you would enjoy See, it. See, and like, that's the thing. That's the thing about laws, too. Like, it's all subjective. Like, morals are a tricky thing yeah. and that's why sometimes i ask questions about like you know because i want to see like where do people's morals lie because morals come from people for me that's a big thing morals are a big thing especially like what is right and wrong definitely i feel like the first of all like right and wrong is not clear and cut like that they're just mm-hmm. like how we said earlier in this discussion how, like you can be good mm-hmm. and bad like morals are something tricky and that's why we have philosophers like Ruben said even though Ruben is hitting the bong right now 
mm-hmm. like uh there's so much there's so much like specific things that we have to talk about and account for that it's 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 just it's so complicated you can't just reform one thing without reforming another thing in my opinion mm-hmm. right yeah but we have to slowly do it yeah of course slowly you have to okay but we talked about so, so much you about can do it politics and society uh like i just wanted to think about like specifically because i wanted to talk to you about this right now too especially since we brought it up with the cat calling like toxic masculinity and like ruben was saying like the machismo and stuff like that is there like any good to toxic masculinity i feel like the, what is, what little... is toxic masculinity oh, yeah. what is toxic yeah what is I feel like toxic masculinity is the way to, for men specifically to, how would I say this, to push aside their feelings and emotions to act more uh, masculine, even though that's not what they desire, maybe. Like, to act more how masculine to, to fit to fit the uh, like the societal standards. That, that I, I feel, feel like all men do that, man. No, I, yeah. feel I, like, think, I don't even think it's a societal standard. I think, standard. why do you think so many men hide their emotions and stuff like that? Yeah, but do you think, because I you think, think, I think that is is like a thing that men do is in our culture it's a societal thing like so, but don't you think it's toxic i think it's unhealthy i wouldn't necessarily call it toxic i think it's, what's I the think difference? it's unhealthy to a certain extent what's the difference between toxic and in moderation i think that we need to do that oh yeah mm-hmm. it's better like oh, yeah, i mean like moderation. i think you need to think about things more objectively and like really realize there's so much suffering going on in the world like you have to realize that your problems don't mean shit to someone who's starving on the other side of the planet that is slaving in a flag, like factory, just making yeah. garments Can't just be for flag, less than a penny. I get you. No, I agree <laughs> with you completely. But like when we're talking about stuff like uh, uh, toxic masculinity specifically and hiding emotion, I feel like hiding emotion could be good in in certain like situations. Like let's say like not being a crybaby, right? Like oh, I stubbed my toe. I'm not like not really stubbed my toe, but like. You don't have to cry about it. You don't have to be a bitch about it, right? And like that's ca- that could be a good thing from talking mas- masculinity. But I think overall, like the unhealthy issues that stem from it, like pent up anger and stuff like that, pent up like emotion. I feel like that is a huge like that can relate to uh, men's what high do you think suicide. Why do you think there's pent up anger? I know one you just said something about emotion. Yeah, one one third one third of people are obese. Why do you think they have pent up anger? Because they're not finding a way to release their stress and anger and that's why we need to start working on incorporating healthy mm. because once we realize that uh, what was I going to say that once we realize to release our anger in a positive manner by being in a way stricted to ourselves and sacrificing things and sacrificing more things to understand that anger is a sacrifice that isn't needed and instead of being angry, we can use that sacrifice to something else that's for the greater good yes. for ourselves and for everything else. So I think that people who are angry, a lot of them are fat and a lot of them are unhealthy. And I think that if those people incorporated a healthy lifestyle, they would be less angry because not only would be they would they be less subconsciously ashamed and of themselves, they would gain confidence and they would get confidence of what they say, mm-hmm. which is why they wouldn't get mad when you disagree with them because a lot of these people that are angry they get mad with you dis- when you disagree with them because they intrinsically know that they don't know any dissonance yeah so they're just okay it's every you. it's everything that's subconscious that's messing with their ability to communicate properly i want to add on to that is not just angry though like y- when you learn to like control your emotions in general like when you learn like oh like if i'm horny like i'm just not gonna fuck raw because i don't want a kid that i can't afford mm-hmm. it's like when you're able to control your urges when you're able to be like ah oh, man like i'm not gonna eat this food because i'm way too obese or i'm gonna go run when you're able to control like oh, i'm really angry or sad right now but i have my work and i have to like compose myself right so i don't get fired controlling your emotions is like a valuable thing and like a lot of people don't realize that their emotions are taking a hold of their lives okay so. yeah i agree with you both uh especially with like how once you can control your emotions you can do so much more but you're specifically like ruben's case was like relating uh fat people with like anger issues right and uh i want to create like a a different situation like a self anecdote from mine would be like uh let's say my my uh wrestling experience let's say my senior year specifically junior year too um 
I was really angry as a person, even though I was fit, I was physically fit, and I was active. I was really angry, not just because, like, because I, I felt like I was failing, right? I'm failing at certain things, like failing at wrestling, right? Like something I took to a high standard, and I was like, I wasn't achieving what I wanted to achieve. And I kept building up that pent-up anger and emotion, and I kept snapping, and I, like, and I had really bad, like, issues, even though, like, I'm the one that created the problems, because I kept holding mm-hmm. up this pent-up anger, and I feel like that's what, like, toxic masculinity to me is. It's creating, like, it's not, let's say, how do I say this? It's like... I think that's just a problem with you, bro. I don't think that's toxic masculinity. You don't think that's a, think that's think that's a, a problem social problem you. like that? You don't think like a lot of guys do that where they build up anger, build up emotion. I like, think that you're putting a label onto something that doesn't need a label. Really? Because really? unless you have like a statistic that says that like people do that, you can like you know, we don't really know unless uh, you have the statistic. No, okay. not even that. But then for it to be like something, they have to also almost be going through this a same exact thing that you're going through for it to be something relevant because it's like okay. Now you're saying that someone from a completely other perspective is getting angry at something and building it up and holding it back and then explodes. No, but now you're like... saying that that is equating to what you experienced, which okay. is not because there is like let's just say this because you could be over dramatic. Maybe you are can't take a workload like this other guy, yeah. and maybe this guy was taking a huge pounding until a certain extent. So now you're comparing his experience to your experience where you could have been over exaggerating. So maybe mm-hmm. you're just you're just uh, giving yourself a, a a diagnosis when you when you don't even know what it actually is. Okay, yeah, I get you. Uh, I completely like I see like where you're coming from, and yeah, maybe I am wrong about this, and I need to think more about it. It doesn't but, even matter if you're wrong about it. Just it just like let's I'm try to be a little bit more yeah, specific. Yeah, because like, I do generalize and I've seen that, and I'm just like, eh, I don't really care about generalizing. Let's let's try to get to the actual point. I okay. Just, I just think- it's good to like make sure that people don't generalize because it it creates stereotypes. Yeah, spe- oh, especially, yeah, man. Okay. We so got we we gotta watch out for what we say when it comes to that. I got you. I got you. Thank you for that. Cause that's like a Freudian slip. All right. So uh, let me let me try to rephrase this better so it would make more sense and not specific. Uh, and also rephrase what you mean by toxic masculinity because you're using it so, like an umbrella term. Like there's okay. so many things that fall under it. Let's let's put a specific definition or, or, or something. About toxic several masculinity. Several. Specifically, it is when uh, men are forced to act as a more machismo or masculine role. And when I say masculine machismo role, it's a uh, repression of emotion. And uh, to fit like uh, societal norms, per, like in a certain degree, and societal norms as in like being like the man of the house, ha- like ha- taking the suffering so your wife and your daughters don't have like stuff like that. So mm. we agree on that, like uh, like what with my mean? definition. I don't. I just personally, I don't think that's toxic masculinity. I think that's just being a man. I think that's you're literally describing what being a man is. We're, we're being someone who takes charge and who takes pride in what they believe in and also is open-minded because you, you're leaving open-minded. that out. Open-minded, yes, now, yes, open-minded. Now, you, now the, what, you, what, you, what you're saying is machismo in the beginning and then you're seeing a bunch of good qualities. But when you say machismo, you say that. they. I feel like you think that people who, men, I feel like you think that men degrade women. And that's not true. That's not true. I'm not saying that specifically. I'm saying toxic uh, masculinity. Would, yes, like, but that's what be. machismo is. Yes, but everything after you say machismo mm-hmm. is good attributes. You're saying great attributes after you say machismo. Oh, I and guess you're saying you, that you. this is toxic masculinity. You're fault, saying that machismo fault. is toxic masculinity, which I agree. Machismo is toxic masculinity. Yeah. But let's look at other countries like uh, Chinese. They they also have a, their version of machismo. Let's mm-hmm. look at Brazil. They also have their version of machismo. I guess especially I guess in Brazil, you. especially since 70 percent of Brazilians have a parasite that makes women more submissive to men and men more aggressive and more dominant. And this is true. You can look it up. It's a parasite that's in Brazil. You can look it up. And um, yeah, it's 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 something that's cultural and and, and nature. Yep, nature. We're animals. And we, that's why we have consciousness, because we need to think about it. But the thing is that people don't want to think, because when they think, it hurts. It fucking damages them. Okay. And they don't want to go through that damage. They don't want to yeah. go through that trauma. They just want to 
hurt other people rather than hurt themselves and then get better. Mm. Okay, so from my understanding, you do not believe that there is toxic masculinity. Is no. it, can I can I say that? You don't yeah. believe? Okay, so uh, I believe to a certain degree there is toxic masculinity. Um, we just have different beliefs. That that's perfectly fine. Um, well, when you say like that's just being a I man. I get your point though. I do get yeah, your point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. When you say you know. uh, there, you're I'm just you're just being a man by doing that stuff. But uh, specifically when I say this stuff. Is there not like uh, unhealthy qualities that can come from repressing your emotions? Here's the thing: you're saying that I don't have a way to release those repressed emotions. Let's just say this: I have, for an example, uh, in the workplace today, my manager was angry at me, and uh, she said a couple of things, and I remained calm. And um, at the end, she was a little bit frustrated, and I remained calm, and I was okay, but I was just a little bit confused. I was, I was. I was like, oh, what happened? You know, like, I don't understand. But I remained calm. Mm. And, and my manager was a little bit flustered. And so I understood, like, I can reserve my emotions and I can suppress my emotions to an extent where she was cutting me off and to a certain extent and I couldn't speak and it was fine. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll listen to you. And then I'll say my part. Okay. So it was like, you know, I, I understood what I had to do. And that's just an example. But when I get home, how, how do I release my stress? Sometimes I smoke out of the bomb. Mm. And this right here, talking with people, releases my stress. So it's yes, just sir. like. Okay. I think that just men and women handle stress differently. Yeah, you know, one million percent they do. Like, men have different hobbies than women, too. But, uh, so. That contributes but you're to using, it, though. That contributes to it. Ruben, the, you're specifically. The toxic masculinity culture that you were yeah. talking about. But, uh, Just because people, men and women, express it differently. Uh, specifically, your example was that, like, but the thing is, I, uh, Ruben, you're open-minded. You're a cool dude. Like, you, you are a smart intellectual, in my opinion. You, you can understand emotion, and you have, like, the ability to know, like, okay, this is what's happening. Okay, let me act like this accordingly. But a lot of people, in my opinion, not a lot of people, like, s some people, without a doubt, don't have the capability to, like, think coolly and calmly like that. You know, so what I'm yeah, saying, like, gotta get into some type of martial arts. Yeah, without a doubt. But like something uh, that makes them something that not even something like martial arts, something that makes them think fast. It can be tennis. It can driving. be driving a car. It can be, uh, it can be anything. Something that makes them act, or something that makes them snappy. Uh, something that releases that. You know. You think they need to be in something disciplined too? That's what I think yeah, they need of, to be. In. Of yeah. course, and discipline is a huge thing. I think that. Yeah. A lot of people in our generation want to be some type of influencer instead of someone who builds a society like the Romans who took pride in, 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 in being scientists and being archaeologists. We don't take pride in work anymore. Workers. Hard work. We don't, we don't take pride in this. You a lot it. of the American workers are, are slack and we have uh, a lot of the... Bro, why do you think people complain so much? Oh, like nine to five job. Why do I have to, you know, people complain about capitalism for that reason. Oh, I don't want to work so hard. That's why you have mm -hmm. unemployment. Well, I feel like they complain because they're not doing something they enjoy. But like, yeah, but I it's, you. it's, it's, okay. I get you. But I get in America, you. you have the opportunity to get better and get the things that you want. So if you put in that hard work, it takes hard work though. And you have to stay consistent and also, you have to stay disciplined. Construction is from like four to three, four to five. So you're home by like five thirty, you get to you have from five thirty so I to say ten to do whatever All right. you want. Alright, so like the last thing I wanna say about toxic masculinity, because we've been talking about this topic for a little bit, is that just like uh let me let me bring up a specific example. Uh would be like saying men can't cry. Right, I think that's stupid. First of all, I think like I, I cry, cry. Like I, cry all the, I cry like I when cry I'm fucking like sad. I cry when I'm happy. Right? But I don't like, cry on the regular. I really cried in front of my girlfriend two days ago. I cry. <laughs> I cry at shows. Bro, I, I cry. I, there's like, so many tears I've shed at the wrestling room and stuff like that. It's hard work. Bro, though. you've literally seen me cry. You <laughs> yeah. Hey, but like Ruben. So like the thing I want to say was, do you think that there's a stigma that men shouldn't cry? Do you feel like there's a stigma in no. society? No, dude. You know what? I think there's a stigma because motherfuckers on social media 
say that there's a fucking stigma mm-hmm. and everyone's like oh yeah there's a fucking stigma mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. This, I get this you. stupid pink haired bitch that Ep- is a fucking stigma <laughs> bubbles oh, epistemic okay. bubbles okay. Okay. she slash her slash they slash you don't know where your parents are from and you're here saying that there's a stigma mm-hmm. like what I the fuck you. and then everyone's like oh yeah 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 she's epistemic she's bubbles everybody oh, agrees with each other he's a fucking it's like a fucking beehive I get you I get you completely no no one oh here's the problem no one wants to be individuals and that's what men are men are individuals all right and like so we're gonna cut it here i think that's the last thing i want to talk about this was a great talk i love all your opinion you let me know about stuff that i didn't even realize i thank you for that too so uh this is probably gonna be the first episode ever of the podcast we haven't even named it but yeah thank you to my boy kaziah thank you to my boy ruben for your amazing opinions and, uh, i'm definitely gonna have y'all all right thank you peace we out, bro. all right peace out bro future something <laughs>